wanted to ask you about the the guest appearances. Mark would like tell you you weren't allowed to guest on other people's. Records. He didn't like us playing with other people. No, no. Did, were you a bit hypocritical? <laughs> oh, yeah. Were you aware that you were getting offers, or would they never? Did they well, I was aware of the the uh, Vic Reeves. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Do when he had the wonder stuff on his stuff. Wasn't it Craig that turned that Craig down? Craig turned that down, yeah. I think Mark would have quite a, you know. I mean, it says that, but, you know, there was times when he was quite, he would have been quite up for it, I think. You know, times when he wouldn't, you know. Right, yeah. just, it's something he told Dave Bush when he joined the band is, I'm paying you, you know. This is what he told Dave, I'm paying you, and what I, what I want is... When you want, when you wake up in the morning, is not think about anything else but being in the fall and writing songs and not have to worry about money and not, you know. Yeah. And there was a bit of that attitude, you know. Yeah, yeah. You remember the fall and then you're going off doing stuff with other people. So he doesn't want you diluting yourself. Yeah, so. yeah. But he did him. <laughs> <laughs> which is which is funny about the uh, the arc thing, you know. Is we had, yeah, we had, according to him, we had it all planned and we were going to walk out and we had studio time booked and all that. And of course, yeah. What he f- forgets to mention you know, is that he's working on a solo album himself at the time, oh, a spoken right. word album. Of course, yeah. So I, I was with Tommy, who was just joined the band and it was really keen and really sort of, you know, and we weren't playing very often. Yeah, and I was with Carl, so we, we well, well, let's do some stuff on our own, you know. While Mark's doing his solo album, and that's all that was. Oh right, that's so all that was. You'd already sort of planned to do that. Before we thought, you well, left. let's not not instead of the fall, but, yeah, you course, know. Yeah. But Mark's working on his spoken word album. It's not many gigs, and by this time, there was no money. No. So that hold of on year is gone. Do you know that you know I'm paying you and you can't. Yeah, work for anybody else well, yeah, well you're not <laughs> so I will yeah, but, right. but it wasn't it's never intended to be instead of the fall you know. did that last you know the last tour of America mm. did that end up paying for itself just yeah just about broke even you know we're at th- we had to cancel that last gig yeah which didn't help but you had a couple of the last couple were sold out right yeah 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 but just about broke even so with um Wanted to talk about cerebral caustic a bit. Yeah. There's there's often rumours online that there was an earlier mix of that with like Dave Bush's electronics and there all that. There was kind of a stuff. well, I'm not sure it wasn't a final mix, but Dave definitely got took out of it in the end. Yeah. But I don't think it, uh, well the mix is not that good, is it, really? It's it's pretty chaotic. It's pretty muddy, isn't it? And it was, again that was a bit of a bit of a change in band Bricks was back yeah do you think that was a good thing uh, probably not as good as it could have been because it caused a lot of internal stuff yeah I think you know it's like you can't really go back and you, there's a lot of personal stuff going on isn't there I mean what occurred to me in the, when she comes I like in to, I like having Bricks in the band don't get me wrong uh, but do you know, it it became a bit top heavy. Right, we, yeah. there were six, six, seven people <laughs> up there, and so then some. You know, you think something's got to give. It's surprising uh, remembering that there's seven people on that record. Yeah, it's just so stripped down. Yeah, yeah. And the critics of that record tend to tend to say that it's short on ideas. They say, mm. "Oh, the joke and the aphid, they sound the same." And yeah. you've got an old song re-recorded and all that. Yeah. How does seven people? translate to, to to that kind of record oh, really I don't know uh, well you'd go in the studio and ideally you'd have you know eight finished songs yeah and then you'd have sort of three ideas for songs to work on but from what I can remember that really wasn't like that that album how many but did you go in with probably about know. three. <laughs> oh no <laughs> but there yeah, again it's what is it don't call me darling is it it's just Big new prince, isn't it? Well, I suppose so, yeah. <laughs> I've never thought of it. The thing is, it's done so differently that yeah. as a fan, you kind yeah, of yeah. don't notice necessarily. Yeah. That you had that sort of thing of Bricks coming back with her guitar orientated songs, which Dave Bush's sort of electronic stuff didn't really fit with. Right. I think. It does seem to be 
that that record is like a watershed in Mark's vocals as well because the few records before that he started to sound a bit tired but he's, mm. he's, it's still a coherent vocal yeah on that record it starts to become a bit sounds a bit the vocals are a bit f- fractured maybe right a bit chaotic yeah yeah, yeah I think that at that time there was a lot of cutting up doing a, a few vocal takes and taking the best bits out and cutting them up so maybe that's that's oh, okay. why so with in there's terms not of a lot of singing of starting the song of singing it straight through and then that's a vocal take did like, he like there was earlier on did he do that you know as recently as middle class with vocal yeah yeah he did yeah there's a lot of that was Rex was doing that yeah right okay mm. did he just become less cooperative do you think with producers around that time to be honest it was hard to get him to sing. <laughs> Right. It was hard. We'd be there, and it, because earlier on you couldn't stop him. You know, we'd do songs that were live and live vocal takes, and uh, yeah. But around about that time, the, it'd all be done. It'd all be done, and you, a lot of the time you're just glad to get your bit done and get out of the studio. Yeah. So was. we'd have the backing track. So what, whatever went on after that, you know. So, that, so during the day we'd do our vo- our backing tracks and do the take and then kind of leave him to it yeah because he liked that as well which is fair enough totally fair enough he liked you know a bit of solitude and a bit of privacy to do his vocals how he wanted yeah but we were working separately yeah I was wondering yeah. did he he used to bring songs in in a sense like he'd bring you a tape say like, yeah like he did with, with ideas yeah yeah did he ever actually write any riffs or anything? He did early, yeah, to a few, like, No Christmas Junkies and, uh, oh, yeah, right. yeah, he did. Oh, right, yeah. okay. You seem to have lost, in the book, you lose patience for incorporating new band members after Dave leaves. Well, yeah, I think you would, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> well, I got sick of teaching him the song <laughs> for a start. And yeah, yeah you, it just gets weary of... Sometimes, like, like like I say, sometimes it's good to have a change. And when we got Dave in, that was a, a real sort of shot in the arm for the band, and it worked. But I was kind of weary of everything. I think by then, yeah, yeah right. you know, there was a sort of element of sabotage in a sense. Mm. You know, Mark would lose Tony and Martin, say, but then he'd get you and Craig. Yeah, then he yeah. loses Riley and gets mm. Bricks. Yeah, tendency to break it up and start again. Must have been Must hard to realise that that had stopped getting results. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It did. It seemed to be diminishing returns all the time. Do you know, I don't want to slag people off, but the people who get, you know, Adrian who came in for a bit, and Tommy, God bless him. Yeah, <laughs> we've got a chance to see what they could do, really. But uh, I think if you want to be in a band, I know it sounds stupid to say it about the fall, but if you want to be in a band, you want to be in a band. In the sense of the, not having it. Not having it people coming Change. and going all the time do you know but you seem to because um, light user syndrome that seems quite a sort of energised relatively energised sounding record yeah you say? I do I do I mean I think I don't know if, why but that's another one that I wasn't really involved with the writing on a lot of it's Simon isn't it I think Simon Wollstonecroft and oh, Bricks right. and yeah oh, a okay. lot of it's Bricks and Julia again yeah, but it's quite a good album. I, I've not got great memories of it, though. That's what I don't know why. You did it was the time when I was getting sacked every week, probably. Course, <laughs> That's probably yeah. not that help. Yeah, getting yeah. sacked and reinstated and sacked again. It probably coloured it a bit for me. Yeah, <laughs> what about uh, Das Vulture? Did you write? Uh, uh, yeah, was, you know, three notes again. And at that time, I was doing quite a bit of songwriting sessions with Round at Carl's. Yeah. And me and him would be batting ideas. He'd be playing the keyboards and a drum machine, and yeah. we'd be working on stuff that came out of that. So. Is it two drummers on that tune? It is, yeah, yeah. It's one of the few I think on that album that's got two drummers on. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right, you know. But I can remember it being a re. I think the the live stuff was really ropey at that time. Then I remember the first gig without Craig, which is the, the Hacienda, and it was terrible. Right. Is it? Yeah, there was six of us again, plus guest vocalists, and Mike Bennett was getting up, and Lucy was getting up, and it was a little bit of a shambles, I think. Right, right. How was it making the album, the first album, without Craig? Was he really missed, or was He it wasn't, just... no. He wasn't, I think, you know, the, it was the typical fall thing of just carry on, carry on. Yeah. 
and you do mm. say he'd been sort of removing he'd been, himself. He had been removing himself and playing less and less guitar. So moving on to uh, to levitate, then I mm. mean, you had a few of those. I had a few, before, didn't you? Yeah, we did. We did. Again, it was uh, probably half and half, I think. And we had an old gang that Tommy and I was working on, and what else is on it? There. Well, there's your song. Thing, oh yeah. Quartet. Uh, yes, it's yeah. something I wrote and. How was the? Thought I'd got away with. But <laughs> How do you mean? Well, it's uh, what I say, isn't it? It's uh, crazy horses. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's basically crazy or- because you know, you, you, I think the fall got away with it a lot over the years. You know, I mean, the, people do borrow, don't they? I remember you mentioning Wham and Dolly Parton. Yeah, 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 yeah. People do borrow, and it, you know, it kind of. I remember talking to Tommy about writing songs, and uh, he was trying to learn how to write songs. So, and uh, he says, "Have you got any tips?" You know. So I says to, I says to him, "Well, what you do is, <laughs> if you were sat watching a film and you you hear a nice little bit of music that you think is, you know, could work, yeah, you take that and then you expand on it and right, you yeah. change it, and then by the time everyone else has got their put their bit on it, it's unrecognisable." Yeah. <laughs> And we, we did that a lot, and you know, everyone does it. Oasis did it, didn't they? God, man, it, I've just read the black book by Tony Carroll and uh, the original drummer, and you know, that stuff is REM and it's T Rex, isn't it? And yeah, it's right. so obvious, man, really. Yeah, yeah. It's so obvious, but that. So, uh, anyway, that was cr- that crazy horses. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and I thought, well, I've got away with this because it sounds nothing like it. And uh, then, the, as soon as it came out, everyone was like, that's just crazy horses. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's funny because it's... by this that time the internet had started, hasn't hasn't it? Yeah. And, you know, and you're getting a different view of people's idea of the fall by this time because it's not you don't just rely on music journalists. Yeah, of to review it and that you just talk about Mark all the time. Yeah, right. Yeah. You've got like people analysing the songs and the structure and the bass lines and and the other oh that's just crazy oh, oh god I thought I'd get away with that <laughs> do you know how the bass I know in a big row with Mark about that about can I not have a song that I write with the singer out of the band singing on it is it too much to ask <laughs> yeah because it's just it's you know Julia and bits of tapes and stuff isn't it do you know how the bass sound on that song? Do you know how that was achieved? Or on that album? On oh, on the um, quartet of Doc Shandling. Yeah, what, I'll tell you what happened was, uh, <laughs> do you know what, we were talking about the guitarist? Yeah. Well, he'd come in late at night, yeah. and uh, it's the same sound as on I'm a Mummy, and he'd come in late at night to uh, do overdubs after we'd gone, and yeah. for some reason one night he borrowed the bass amp Right. And put his guitar through the bass amp and he blew up one of the speaker cones. Right. <laughs> so then next day I come to plug it in, it sounds all oh, weird and distorted and then Mark yeah. was like, That's great. Oh, well. <laughs> that sounds great, we're having it like that. It's a really Which, abrasive record it, across yeah, the board. It is, yeah. But think, it wasn't intentional, it was just that he'd blown my speaker up. <laughs> 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 so you think of uh I don't know if people think of bands of like these group of five people who all sit in a room and write a song and then they go and record it and all that, but it's really not like that. Because and because talking about Oasis is that you know the thing of definitely maybe came out last year the reissue, yeah, and it had loads of Noel's demos on it, and he, he might as well have put them out, right? You might as well. They just sound like the finished song. Oh right. But it was never like that in the fall. Never. Yeah. Do you know all these songs have come together from various bits and bobs that people would throw at it? And yeah. Not necessarily in the same room at the same week. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, uh, but you know, I you, go, you have this benchmark. There's are you doing your bit? You know, yeah. are you happy with your bit? Yeah. And do you, are you happy with your contribution? That's all. You really, do. that's all you can do. You know. And what was that? Odd, you know, Simon quit over everything but myself. I mean. Yeah. Well, it wasn't just that. Again, you know, yeah. that's never that. It was, a lot of it's about money. Right, right. He wasn't happy with the two Dulce guys walking out and not being left with the producer for a start. Right. Lots of money problems. Then, the, yeah, then the sort of final straw is that if, you, if you're doing all this and the songs aren't how you want them to be, well, what's the point? Yeah. Do you know? What's the point? Do you remember how he wanted that song 
to be. I remember the... working with him on the demo of it. Yeah, yeah, and it was it was all programmed keyboards and oh, okay. was, uh, quite sort of dancey commercially. I think that version got used. You wouldn't have yeah. heard it, but the last song on the album after you left is everything is it but right. myself. Okay. But it sounds like sort of rave or something. Yeah, like, well, like that's, that was the vein honest. that he was working on it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you know what tunes Carl played on? He played on Masquerade, and then isn't there a live version of uh, Hurricane Edward? Maybe there's a, a live snippet of everything yeah. but myself. Yeah, I mean, not much. He played it uh, because then after that album, we went into a separate studio in London, did Masquerade, and then we did all the B sides for that single because there was like three different versions of it again with yeah. six different songs on. So he played on all those. Oh, calendar right. and yeah that was interesting because I mean you hadn't done many non-album tracks since <laughs> no we hadn't no and it's interesting that it's at that time in the band when suddenly there's an yeah. excess of well there's a few yeah well there's songs. the one that Mark wrote with Damon isn't there which is Calendar isn't it yeah yeah and then there's and Scareball was that Scareball one? was one of Julia's yeah. was it from what noise originally um, possibly and then there was the last song that I ever wrote for The Fall, which was... Uh, was that Ivan O's two? Yeah, years? which was, funnily enough, my hundredth song. Was it? <laughs> yeah. It was my hundredth songwriting credit. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I mean, there's that crazy stuff about money, you know, um, having to cash a cheque at cash converters yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, they got really bad, Mum, really, really bad. What, what were the consequences of that VAT thing that you had to sign against your house? I mean, yeah. did that... Oh, man, I had to I ended up having to sell my house. This is really? why I didn't put it in the book, yeah. Because, uh, it was too traumatic. Oh, no. Yeah, I ended up having to sell it, and... Uh, to pay thousands and ended up moving into Dave Bush's house. Oh my god! Because he was off in, the, in London working with Elastica, and he was living up there, yeah. and he had a house here. So we ended up moving him to his house right, to right. sell ours. But that was two years later when it all came to a head because yeah. you know it's a VAT bill and it, they don't work quickly. They, no, of course. So two years later, it, you know, it was you've signed this and. You're, yeah. li- you're liable for this and oh my god you know, it's a bit grim I do want to ask you um, are you familiar with the term piss tracks no <laughs> that's what the fans call the the sort of you know things like WMC blob oh yeah the, 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 the old extra track the sort of I think that's quite it's, I used to call them the sort of yellow submarine of the album or, <laughs> right. yeah, do you know the, all good albums have a don't they? They have a sort of They're quirky the... song that all Fall albums have had one, haven't they? I think pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. From Live at the Witch Trials. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, they're, they're kind of Octopus's Garden, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> of the Fall albums. Okay, but, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Is there a song that you wrote and weren't credited for that you'd like to take the opportunity to oh, play? Sorry. Oh, man. <sighs> That's probably ones that I did more than, you know, I didn't. Well, yeah. Touch sensitive. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> I love that one. Yeah, because that, you know that was just a recreation of one of my bass lines. So. Yeah, and it is all bass, isn't it? Really. The, well, it's that the, riff, isn't it's it? It's the riff, yeah. Which you know. And so I'd have been happy to share it. <laughs> <laughs> I've just got a couple of random mm-hmm. geek questions about different songs. Um, there's a bit in Gross Chapel. Paul drums on that. Mm. Right? There's bits in the verses where it sounds like you're trying to throw each other off. Do you remember? It's that? a weird timing on that. I think that's all it is. I don't. I think it's just a weird, oh, right. weird bass riff timing for some and and crazy tar. Oh right. It's I don't sound- think it wasn't deliberate. I don't think. Oh right. But, it sounded like okay. there's moments where you will elongate your part by one beat. Just yeah. To throw the drum. Not off to throw the drummer it. off, just oh, because right. it was a, a weird bass riff and guitar riff that trying to fit together oh okay <laughs> and uh, Lay of the Land that's mm. quite 
yeah. your actual bass line on that's quite unusual because mm. you're doing a melody bit in the verse but yeah. then there's these bits where you just sort of ping off ping, away ping from up, yeah. the song I know I was surprised because we did that with Bricks and the Extricated like, you know this is one of the because what, what, what we've done is we've been very careful to uh, pick songs that people we, we feel that people have got ownership of yeah like we'd never do Billy's Dead right we'd never do Edinburgh Man right, you know right. stuff like that do you but mean in terms of in terms of lyrics and who wrote them and per, whether the lyrics are personal in our opinion? You know. Got you. So we have been careful, but Bricks has got an idea of what she feels, you know, ownership of. Yeah. Like L.A. for instance. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, and uh, Lay of the Land was one of them. And God, yeah. It's, how did I get away with putting that many notes in that? <laughs> I didn't get my fingers cut off. <laughs> Do you remember but what the inspiration for that was? I, th- I was just doodling about, and Brick said, "Use that, Do you know, put that in. That's good. Put it in." Yeah, Do you yeah. know, it was it was a, a idea of Brick's is the sort of rockabilly guitar, and I was just doodling around, and yeah, and she said, "Yeah, that's great. Put it in." And I was she sure, you know, okay. <laughs> and then so I tr- obviously tried to expand on it somehow. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, but it works. I think I've run out of questions, yeah. Steve. So that's good. Thank no, you very thank much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so there you go, hope you all enjoyed that. Uh, thanks to Steve for agreeing to give an hour to a fan whose only journalistic qualifications are speculation and a laptop. Uh, definitely Mark e. Smith's favourite type of fan, I think. So again, Steve's book is called The Big Midweek and is available from whatever bookshops may remain in your area or failing that just give up and use Amazon like everyone else. Uh, Thanks for listening.